Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at data classification, specifically how data classification relates to the CCNA security exam. Okay, before we get started here, data classification is not, well, at least explicitly listed on the current CCNA security exam blueprint. And when I say current CCNA security exam, I'm talking about the 640553 IINS exam, which is current as of the time of this recording. That being said, this topic is included in all the Cisco press books that I have reviewed for the CCNA security exam and the data classification that they include in those books is specifically about US data classification structures which we'll see in just a minute here so that's why we're going over this this isn't something that you're gonna need to know intimately for your day-to-day -day operations it's good to know but this is something that's a topic that's pretty specific to just a tiny portion of a specific test okay with that caveat in effect let's jump into this data classification basically is the act of assigning the level of sensitivity to data and during this lesson I'm going to use data and information pretty much interchangeably in this case I'm not talking about data as bits on the wire I'm talking about data as basically documentation so with that definition of data classification it begs the question what is sensitivity and conveniently I have a definition for sensitivity right here a sensitivity is a calculation of the damage that the release of the information would cause and that's basically what data classification comes down to it's assigning a weight to information as to how important it is and really how much damage it could do if it was freely shared and this ranges from information that would you know be potentially very damaging to your organization such as the uh, the recipe for Soylent Green and it goes down to stuff that's not really going to end your organization but could be uh, an embarrassment if it got out into the public such as the pictures from the uh, last networking department Christmas party and from a network standpoint, you can see that you would want your uh, documentation and diagrams for your internal network infrastructure to be protected. You don't want that just being handed out to any old schmo. So classified information is sensitive information to which access is restricted by law or regulation to a particular class of person or classes of persons. A formal security clearance is required to handle classified documents or access classified data. And that's important to realize that there are laws and regulations that may determine classification of information that you know stuff that you don't really care about for instance I work in healthcare and we're strictly regulated by HIPAA laws so information that I might not consider to be too important <laughs> is something that could get that could get my company and myself in a lot of trouble if I were to release it so after data has been classified and set up into a data classification structure and we'll look at a couple examples of those you have to determine who's going to have access to it and that's what a security clearance is a security clearance is a level of information Information that you are authorized to view and your security clearance determines the highest classification of information you're able to view so this is analogous to the Cisco privilege level so if you have privilege level 15 you can see everything if you have privilege level 7 and for those who don't know the privilege levels for Cisco go from 0 to 15 if you have privilege level 7 you can use all the commands up to privilege level 7 so you can use the commands that are available at level 7 level 6 level 5 level 4 blah 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 so that's how security clearances work too you're given a certain level and you have access to information at that level and below okay and the next definition here is need to know and that's an important concept to keep in mind when I was in the military I had a top secret clearance as we'll see in a bit here that's the highest security clearance that you can have so with that top secret security clearance I was able to go to the gates of area 51 and demand to see the alien spacecraft and bodies right uh, no a none of that shit's real but B and more importantly even though I had a top secret clearance it didn't mean that I had access to everything within the US military that was at a top secret level I was relegated to top secret information within my particular silo which was electronics and in particular radar systems so I had access to some stuff that you know you don't want the bad guys getting but uh, to make this analogous to a network situation if you're given a uh, your top level within your organization let's say it's confidential it's a top level that doesn't mean that a guy that's in the server team that has confidential security clearance can come to you and say hey yeah you know what I need I need all your level 15 username passwords I need your network diagrams um, let me get all the models all the configurations you'd be like go get Ben so let's take a look at a well-known 
data classification structure, and that is the U.S. public sector data classification structure. Public sector is basically synonymous with government. So in the U.S., uh, information is called classified if it's been assigned to one of these three levels. And the first of those levels, and the lowest obviously, is uh, confidential. And this is defined as information which would damage national security if disclosed. And what you're going to find out about data classification is that it's pretty subjective. I mean, you can see here that secret is the second highest classification, and that's information that would cause serious damage. So you have to have some method of determining damage versus no damage, or damage versus serious damage, and a lot of times this is pretty subjective. And right here you can see that the most information that is classified is held at the secret sensitivity because it's the uh, quote-unquote sensible middle. You've got you know three different levels and I mean you don't want to make that decision between serious damage and damage so you just throw it in here. Top secret is the highest security level that is quote unquote publicly disclosed so ooh, there may be some other stuff that's higher than that. It would cause exceptionally grave damage to national security if disclosed to the public. So again some subjectivity to that as well but you could see where this would be schematics for uh, fighter jets, stuff like that. So along with these classifications, there's also a term declassified, which makes sense. It's information that at one point was one of these, you know, confidential secret or top secret, but has since then been downgraded and had its classification removed. And also along with that is downgraded, which means it's been set to a different classified level, but it's still classified. So you could have information that was top secret and it gets downgraded to secret or even confidential. Uh, whereas information that was confidential, if it gets downgraded, it should then become unclassified, which may or may not be the case, as we'll see. Okay, as so we just saw, uh, in the U.S., again, we're talking about the public sector here, information is called classified if it uh, reaches one of these levels of confidential, secret, or top secret. Information that is not so labeled is called unclassified information, which makes sense. So unclassified information is exactly what it says. It's information with little or no sensitivity. Unfortunately, we're dealing with the government here, so it doesn't quite end there. There's a number of categories that I jokingly refer to as classified unclassified categories and basically it's information that doesn't meet the criteria of being classified so it's not quite confidential information but the government in its infinite wisdom wants to control access slash distribution to this information and these classifications are they're constantly in flux and the names change a bit so you'll see stuff like unclassified law enforcement sensitive unclassified for official use only see that one a lot no foreign means no foreign nationals should be accessing this information blah 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 there's a grip of these the one that I've seen referred to in the Cisco document well let me take that back not quite Cisco documentation the Cisco study guides or the CCNA security exam is sensitive but unclassified which may or may not exist anymore um, down here I'm got a little note here that President Obama recently issued an executive order to reclassify slash address some of these I don't know if that took care of this if this is still around or not I read about a paragraph of this and was bored to fucking tears so knock yourself out if you want to go ahead and take a look at that this just came out so obviously it's not going to reflect on the CCNA security exam pretty much none of this is I'm thinking it's just good to be aware that there are even you know categories within the unclassified category but I wouldn't worry my pretty head too much about memorizing all of these just know that they exist it may come up on the exam uh, here's that quote that I was talking about uh, US government official said no one individual in government can identify all the controlled unclassified categories let alone describe their rules so that's what I was talking about how a lot of this is really subjective and also with government you get just tons and tons and tons of red tape so and don't really worry about this too much other than to know that it seems that there exists an animal farm structure to the unclassified information in that all classified information is equal but some is more equal than others.